Welcome, No DQ Galaxy, to another edition of the No DQ Review Show. Everybody, how's it going? And one at one time, how's it going? Wonderful. Fantastic. Glorious, which we will talk about. Well, we will talk about that you later. You didn't let me get my thing in. Like, what the hell? <clears throat> okay, wow. Vito, You're I'm going to introduce you first. I'm going to introduce you first right now. Big Vito LaGrasso, how's it going? I'm feeling kind of fluffy. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was your that was it <laughs> that, hey listen you 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 made me last and after the big chat room stuff you know like what goes on you know at the vip parties with talent relations with big Vito. <laughs> let's talk about sex baby it was like 19 moms who had the same line i was like all right let's let's talk about it you know what do you like you know what's your fetish you know how do you you know what's going on and wait till they find out later this week that some of the moms were actually boats and hoes. I got area codes to give out. So if your area code is in my is in my digits, you know your mom was at the party swinging a kid. Wow. And if nobody knows what that means, go to www.nodqforums.com. Correct, Aaron? Yes. Hashtag clean your rooms. Uh, Hashtag Aaron. clean your rooms. One of the guys, Aaron, did you remember the guys? We got to give him a shout out because he he came out with the Jericho thing. It was one of the guys came out with a picture of Jericho who said, clean your room. Guy, let me tell you something. I don't remember your name because I'm on there, you know, doing my troll thing because I'm the co I'm the troll king. But let me tell you something. You are awesome. That was great. And I put it in capital letters. This is fucking awesome. I had to say it. Okay. It was Brandon Anderson. Brandon. My man, that was great. Aaron, Aaron, you might have to beep that so you can get your ads. Air, uh, Vito did the F-bomb. I'm sorry well, about the F-bomb, so guys. But, uh, I, I, that's all right, that's all right. But we got a lot to talk about. Jexy, how's it going today? Fantastic. Couldn't be better. Awesome. And do you know in the main event today, it's Jexy's Rage, so I hope you're ready. And without further ado, I'll give you a better introduction this week than last. Aaron, Aaron Rift, the owner of No DQ. The man, how's it going? I'm doing pretty, pretty, pretty good. I'm looking forward to this video today. We got a lot of interesting topics to discuss today. I'm looking forward to Jexy's rage. And don't worry about the profanity. I mean, this video is already out the door as far as the, the PG rating goes. So we're just going to wing it. Nice. I love it. And you know what? Right off the bat, everyone, we got the three big hot scoops of this week. And it's Roman Reigns and steroids. Page in her neck injury. Could it be career threatening? And of course, Jay Uso. And I believe it was Jay, right, Aaron? Yeah. I always get those guys mixed up. Oh, yeah. And his DWI. With that said, I do want to cover all of these. So let's start with the elephant in the room Roman Reigns being linked to an alleged steroid ring out of a guy out of Miami. Um, you know, steroids and wrestling go back. A long, long time, Vito, and, and, and I'm going to start with you because we know Vince McMahon dealt with this since the late 80s, early 90s. He had to fire wrestlers, hired them back, but, you know, with the PR that WWE is today, if this Roman Reigns steroid thing gets, like, there's proof, or there, it, it, it really blows up, and, and Roman's, like, right there, front and center, what does WWE do with his push? Do they have to suspend him? He was suspended for a wellness violation a year or so ago. Vito, what's your thoughts, man? You know probably better than any of us. Well, if everybody knows, and I want everybody, I know this is like hitting, this is hot news. So if everybody would go and look at the, uh, you know, the WWF steroid trial and get your facts and know what was going on and how they, you know, all the guys were on steroids. It was somebody distributing. It was an inside thing. Hulk Hogan was involved with it. Everybody had to do an affidavit. Everybody had to do something for the trial, right? In the end, um, you know, it was obvious what was going on. By You could see the look on the bodies. You could see the bigness. You could see what was happening. You know, who's, he said, she said, what going on? You know, everybody, you know, was doing it. It was the in thing back then. And then it came to, okay, now we have to correct the problem. Correcting the problem to a certain extent, there was, a, you know, I mean, guys, it, it's, in, it's in wrestling. It's in sports. It, it happens. You know what I mean? Guys take this stuff. 
Guys need to, you know, be competitive. Guys need to be that, have that look, have that persona, have that, you know, it, it, that's the name of the game. But when you look at it from then to now, and, okay, the steroid trial was one big, huge thing with Hulk Hogan, Vince McMahon, the doctor, and all this stuff. Okay. Now you have Roman Reigns front and center from Miami where A-Rod was persecuted from a dealer in Miami. There could be a connection. There couldn't be a connection. But just the fact that he was named in a steroid rate. Now, A-Rod got suspended for a year, came back after a suspension. Does he get convicted? Right now it's just hearsay. There's no trial. There's nobody saying anything. We got to take it as hot news and what yeah. this man said. What will the WWD do with this news? How will they handle it? You look at how they handled the Brock Lesnar steroid thing when he was in UFC and the USDA busted That's him. That's a good point, Vito. I forgot about that. They did practically when, nothing. Yep. When they did, they busted him for steroids. All right, he was taking something. Okay, he came to SummerSlam. He had a rage, busted open Randy Orton. And then they had to come up with a quick solution to the problem. Part-timers are not tested. Why aren't you tested? You're still an employee of the company. Yeah. The thing that we've talked about on another show, and this is something that's fact, if the WWE is portraying their wrestlers as actors, why is there drug testing? That's a good point, too. I mean, and here's the thing, Vito, and I want to, you know, Aaron talked about this on his video, you know, earlier, and I do want to hear Jexy's thoughts, too. So we take Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, and, you know, they're not even in the Hall of Fame in baseball because of, you know, steroids. Um, but yet their careers were legendary before they took supposedly steroids. Right. How does it translate from, like, baseball and an actual competitive sport where you're competing against others, you know, and wrestling is a show, but uh, internally you are competing to get your spot. Is it the same? Is it different? And 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 I know with the Brock Lesnar situation being a part timer, Roman's front and center as the guy of WWE. So how is it going to be different for Roman versus Brock? So I know that was a lot I threw at you. There's a lot of if you guys. I don't know if you guys remember this far back, but there was a baseball player by the name of Brian Downing. He played for the California Angels, and he was the first guy who came up with a body that was freaking massive and bulky and muscular, and they said, man, that guy's got to be on something. That was the first one of Brian Downing of the California Angels. Yeah. From there, then you had like small excerpts, and like you thought maybe, possibly – Lenny Dykstra, who played for the Mets, who was a skinny twig and went to the Phillies, and all of a sudden Lenny Dykstra was a monster. But the one thing with steroids and baseball, guys, it doesn't make you hit a ball. It doesn't handle your hand-eye coordination. When you make, it doesn't ha help you catch a ball. It could make you run faster. It increases your power when you hit the ball, but you still got to catch it. You still got to hit it. You know, so like, how much does it really? Have? Does it enhance your body? Yes. Does it help you? Yes. Now, as far as Roman Reigns goes, right now he's got the he's got the spotlight on him, especially with WrestleMania down the road and WrestleMania coming up. The worst thing that could happen is this thing goes further, and they implicate him in some kind of drug ring, or he was a user. If you remember back in two thousand. Uh, five, six, seven, when they came out with the drug policy, the wellness policy for mm -hmm. WWE. And then afterwards, I believe, I believe a couple of the wrestlers were, um, implicated. I won't give their names cause that's not right. Though a couple of the wrestlers were implicated for buying things online and giving their credit card, if you guys remember, we're not. And a lot of people names. know of, of room names we've heard back then of, around that whole thing. So it's not. Right. This isn't new, obviously, to wrestling. It's not new, but now that you have Brock Lesnar passed, it passed because he was a part timer. What excuse can you give Roman Reigns as the face of the company and the guy 
and the future champion who's supposed to dethrone Brock Lesnar as the man in the company. If this thing goes a couple months and there's more and more information leaking, the WWE has no choice. I mean, until proven guilty, until he's found, okay, you did this, okay, you did that, okay, you did the other thing. Can't say nothing. Right now, he's clean. Right now, he's on his path. But if that happens, it's going to be a messy (laughs) PR thing. How can they publicize the guy? How can they promote him as the face? How can kids look up to him? How You make a mistake, everybody's entitled to make a mistake. I will give that. Forgive and forget. Let it go. Mm-hmm. You know, first time, you know, shame on you. Second time, shame on me. Third time, you made an ass of everybody. So I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm not saying he did anything wrong. Hey, first time you made a mistake. You thought he needed some help. You thought he was doing the right thing. Okay. Okay, we forgot about it. It's all. But now this came out, and he's on the same playing level as A-Rod because face of the Yankees, face of the WWE, Miami, Florida, same kind of thing. You know, where do you go with it, guys? How do you perceive it? What do you do with it? Go ahead, Aaron. Okay, so we have a little bit of breaking news here as we're doing this video. Roman Reigns actually just released a statement about this situation. He said, I have never heard of Robert Rodriguez or the wellness, fitness, nutrition. I learned from the mistake I made nearly two years ago and paid the penalty for it. Since then, I passed 11 tests as part of WWE's independent drug testing program. End quote. That was the quote. Very interesting. And, and, and Aaron, uh, wow. That, that's now, Are you going to post this video on Thursday morning? Yes. <laughs> I want your thoughts with this. Um, is the Miz going to now defeat Roman Reigns for the Intercontinental title at Raw 25? What's your thoughts? Well, I thought that the Miz might beat Roman Reigns regardless, typical outside interference or whatever. Who knows, though? I mean, Roman yeah. could very well keep the title. And like Vito said, you really need proof for WWE to take any action here. And unless there's any kind of proof that, that he was buying steroids from this guy, I, I don't see WWE doing anything about it. That, that's yeah, and, and that's a thing with speculation. You know, it pops up on all kinds of sites. Everyone starts talking about it, and you still have to get to the facts. Jexy, um, any thoughts on this? Uh, the history of steroids and wrestling. Anything you want to you want to add to this? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> this guy in particular, he had actually uh, got busted about a year ago, around this time, when it uh, initially he got rolled up for it. And what he was actually doing was running a fitness company where he was telling people that uh, the FDA had actually approved of him to sell these steroids. He had other athletes. He had bodybuilders. He had another wrestler um, that were spokespeople for him. And, you know, who's to say that if it happened that it wasn't under the guise of this is legal because it's FDA approved, which we all obviously know it wasn't, that it's just a cover up for a steroid ring. Um, And they, you know, we know they test them. We know that they do. And like what Vito touched on, as far as them being portrayed as actors, they are, but we know that they're also still athletes. And Vito, you know, better than any of us. When you're in the ring with somebody, you're trusting your body with that person. You are. Do you want to be in the ring with somebody who's drugged up? I don't. You, you know. don't, but you know what? If you know, but it's the same thing like you're talking about. If you're supposed to compete and you have to have that body and look, everybody's not blind, guys, and everybody <laughs> sees things for what they are. You don't get that cut up and you don't get that ripped and you don't get that muscular from buying stuff from GNC. You don't get it from the vitamin shop. Strict diet, heavy training. You know, I could tell you, following the wellness policy when I was in the WWE, I had the biggest pill box you ever seen. I was taking everything under the sun. But I was running three miles in 20 minutes every day. I was doing my squats. I was I was wrestling every day. I, I couldn't I have three percent body fat, but I was go, 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 go. Some guys need the help. Now, I had a very lean and ripped body. Some guys have a larger than life body. They have mass and they're ripped. You can see the difference in certain. uh, We're not going to mention or throw shade at anybody here because that's not what we do. But you guys as as, uh, analysts here and journalists, like my co-workers here, 
And for the fans out there, you could see whose body is enhanced and <laughs> whose body is not. You could see who takes certain certain um, vitamins and certain guys who don't. You could see the difference in bodies from the hardness, from the you know the the cleanness, the ripness, and you could see who's not. Uh, on the program. Yeah. So guys, I mean, this program is not about burying people. This is to be given an observation of what we see, just like we want you to give us and give your own opinion. We all have our own opinions here. We're not throwing shade at nobody, but it is what it is guys. And when you see guys that kind of ripped and that kind of bulk, you got to say, okay, they got to be taking something because you don't do it just on water and broccoli and eggs and you know it yep. just doesn't happen guys i'm telling you it just doesn't happen well i'm gonna end that segment with innocent until proven guilty and with that said what's everyone's thoughts on jay uso and his dwi in texas aaron rift i know you've been covering that so any thoughts you have on that um and, and does ww typically just put slap on a wrist uh, on the wrist for that type of issue because i think they've done that before with others yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure several other guys in the past have been in these types of incidences, and sometimes they get thrown out. There's not enough evidence to, to really go forward with charges, and hopefully he wasn't doing it. You know, that, that's something really terrible when somebody drinks and drives, so I'm just hoping that there was some other circumstance. I think it was just suspicion of, of DUI where um, they did not do a breathalyzer. They just did a field sobriety, and he was arrested with the belief that he was under the influence, so... Uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, we don't know all the facts about it, and uh, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Yep, good point. Anyway, uh, Vito and Jax, any thoughts on Jey Uso? Go ahead, Jax. Go ahead. Go first. Will it affect his push, even, you know, the Uso's push or anything like that when this type of stuff happens? I think that, you know, again, just depends on what they find out if he actually did anything. There's speculation <clears throat> excuse me, that, you know, he was drinking and driving, which obviously he knows better. We all know better. Never do that. It's the stupidest fucking thing you could ever possibly do. Yeah, absolutely. But there's also speculation, you know, that he had weed on him, which is whatever. Who cares? It's weed. It's marijuana. Nobody cares. That's whatever. Drinking and driving, he should know better. And yeah. if he really truthfully did do that, yeah, he should be punished a little bit because you do have kids who have access to that information. And, you know, it, it's wrong, period. Yeah, <laughs> and he is a role model to kids, too. You know, there are young kids out there that look up to him and his brother as role models. So, you know, it, it doesn't set a very good example. Yeah, and WWE's in this PG era, I, I, I say they're more rated G than anything. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying with the Braun Strowman stuff to get back to that level. But, um, yeah, so, you know, hopefully everything works out with Jey Uso and, you know, that just gets... I will, give, I will give something here that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, everybody's entitled to a mistake. It's like we talked about Roman Reigns. He made a mistake. If Jey Uso made a mistake, hey, you made a mistake, you get forgiven. Will that affect his push? It might because they're going to figure the slap on the wrist is going to say, okay, we're going to cut your push. We're going to take the titles off you. You got to re-earn your keep because you're being, you're being treated as a top superstar here, as a world champion. So you need to act like a world champion, carry yourself like one. The storyline that you can get from this, which nobody has hit on, is that we are in the Uso penitentiary. I got arrested on purpose because I wanted to see my homies in a joint. <laughs> Anybody think about that? Gosh, is this 1998 or 99? I wish. I mean, that, that you know what? And we people have touched on this before, Vito. Bringing the realism of, you know, the wrestler's real life into the show is that's what people like seeing. But right. that's what they need. If they did that, now there's something we want to we want to look at. And there's something the Uso Penitentiary. Why did you get arrested, Jack? You know why I wanted to see my homies? Because shit was going down. And we had to check the Uso rep in there. So I went in there. And I was, you know, high-fiving and bumping with some mofos. And we were kicking stuff. You know, talking some snap. And then, you know, my parole officer came. He got me. He, you know, and he got me out of lockup and shit. You know, but I just want to say hello to my homies. Yeah, yeah, well, there was uh, there were some people on, on Twitter that were making the Uso Penitentiary joke. So it's definitely been done. Now, I actually wanted to... Uh, Relate this to another topic, Virtue. I know you brought up yep. Paige earlier. Um, somebody yep. suggested the idea to me that Sasha Banks turns heel 
and they play up on what happened in real life and turn it into a storyline. So I thought maybe we could discuss this here and get your guys' thoughts on it. Virtue? Yes, that would be fantastic. Now, look, that's a whole nother can of worms if, if wrestlers, workers are legitimately hurting people. And some of the wrestlers, and maybe you know, I'll let you, Vito, can mention their names, are actually doing it consistently now, which is a concern. But with that said, Paige was on Raw. Now, if she can never wrestle again in WWE, you know, is that just WWE doctors? Could she still work outside of WWE? At least she's on TV. She's still going to get paid. So that's a good thing. You know, if, if she was so bad, she couldn't even be out on TV because she hurt. She was in a wheelchair. That's when it gets scary. But Aaron, that's a great, I would love to see that. Now, the problem is how bad do you think Sasha feels that this happened? If Paige never wrestles again, you know, Sasha's going to have that guilt. That's what I want to know from everybody. Jexy, we'll start with you. Like, do you think this is going to affect Sasha personally, emotionally, if Paige can ever wrestle again with that guilt? Of course. Of course. How? I mean, nobody's out there. I shouldn't say nobody. A majority of real workers are not out there trying to hurt other people. Yeah. That's not the way it works. If you're a worker that's going out there hurting somebody on purpose, you're not a badass. You're a bitch. And you need to get out of the ring. Is that Period. a reference to a certain somebody that that is sexy? That's down in Mexico. In AAA. Yeah. <laughs> Very well, could be. Yeah. But, but I mean, let's say that like they're not doing it intentionally, but they just seem to be working so stiff they're hurting people consistently. That's, I guess, what I was asking. Have to work stiff for accidents to happen. People slip. Contact is made. Things happen. It just it's period. That's part of the game. You know, mm-hmm. that's what you're getting into when you're getting into it. Of course, Sasha feels bad. She's not out there trying to hurt her on purpose. I don't believe that for one second that she meant to do it on purpose. So if they turn it into a storyline, given that Paige could possibly come back, sure. If it really truthfully is the end of her career, which as far as I know, she had talked to Lillian Garcia, I think, um, in around December. Yeah. Where she had said to her back then that her personal doctor told her she should never wrestle again. And she continued to do it anyway. Right. So if there is a possibility for her to come back, sure. If it is the end, I don't think that's really the right way to go with it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a proponent. There's always life after wrestling. There's so much Paige can do, and she can still be great, a career a career manager. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. Vito, what's your thoughts on this whole situation with Paige and, and Sasha Banks being the one that, well, I guess, her move hurt her in Madison Square Garden at that level? Well, event. guys, you know, like I said on Getting Color when we were talking about <laughs> this, you know, subject when the show was based on this, you know, was it, you know, Sasha Banks' fault or was it the agent's fault for not protecting Sasha, for not protecting Paige and saying, okay, if you don't see a bump coming, it's harder for you to bump. If you see it coming, you can flat bump, and yep. you know how to handle your bump. But when you take a shot like that to your neck and back, and you don't know what's coming at you, and you don't know how hard it's coming, you can't prepare for it. Now, could it have jacked her whole neck and back and you know sh- shook her spine up? That's exactly what happened. Does Sasha Banks feel bad? I'm sure she does. Was it done on purpose? Probably not, because they probably did it on house shows. But it's the responsibility of the agents and the office to make sure that they protect their wrestlers correctly and say, okay, you have an injury, you're just coming back. We want to make sure that your bumps are flat. We want to make sure that you're okay. So when you do something to somebody's neck or back and they're not looking, that's a high risk thing. Everybody's supposed to take care of everybody in wrestling. Everybody's supposed to protect everybody. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Does it get rough in there? Yes, it does. Does it get a little snug in there? Of course it does. Does that mean that you're um, allowing yourself to get injured? You hope you don't because the thing in the name of the game is to take care of everybody. But in this era of wrestling, there are certain wrestlers who have hurt other wrestlers three and four times and they're still wrestling. So what does that mean? That you're a little reckless. Now, some people have hurt, you know, um, the same mainstream wrestlers that they are. And then some people have hurt legends. And, you know, when you're in your 50s, you know, your body's saying, yeah, I could do this. I can hang with these young sons, you know, and I'm I'm good. But when you're 56 and you're taking something that's, you know, not even in your league that you never took before. And you're just hoisting somebody. 
and their whole back and neck and everything goes out. It's easy to take a flat bump, people. Want to drop kick me, want to super kick me, want to hit me from the top rope. As long as I see it coming, I know I have to fall back. Tuck your chin, protect yourself, bang, you're good. When you're taking something from the side or it's a leaping or bounding or you don't see it, that's when you get hurt. If you're running at somebody reckless and they're against a barrier and you're separating them sh their shoulder, who's the fault on? Now the guy. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and go say ahead. this, Vito. Uh, through, through everything you just said, they allow Seth Rollins on Monday Night Raw to do the curb stomp. Now, when I was watching that, first of all, I don't know how Raw ended. Like that was so strange. Finn had the red mark on his head. He was playing it up like he got a concussion. What are they doing with that? And and then and then of course the next night Balor's out there with Sasha Banks dancing with her in the mixed match <laughs> challenge. Explain this to me. It's bad writing. I don't <laughs> think they knew. Listen, if that's the curb stop was a ban. The ban why? Because of the concussion lawsuit that's going on that's still in the courts. Now they brought that curb stomp out. He did it on the. He did it on Monday Night Raw. Then they had him selling in the ring. Whether yeah. he was hurt or not, we don't know. But he stayed there for a couple minutes. Now, was it the end of the show? It wasn't the end of the show. Yeah. Was somebody supposed to come out? Wasn't somebody come? That's why the TV is not believable today because they're not following up on what's going on. What's to say that Vince McMahon couldn't get up from the thing? march to the ring, go to do something and freaking cut a promo or somebody save the end of the show. So they're lackadaisical in what they're doing. And like I've been saying, if they would take the time to sit there and watch the show from our viewpoint to see what's going on, you know, instead of behind the scenes, I think they would get a better concept of what's believable and what's not. Because there are a lot of stuff that is not believable. And when you leave a show off like that, and that's got to be, in the last six months, I could say there's been five or six times when the show ended like that. And, of course, everybody's forgetting the four count from the ref where the guy didn't kick <laughs> out. So, I mean, yeah. how obvious can you be? And then you just you have the guy counting. Okay, ref, you just made an ass of yourself. Yeah. You're listening to the microphone. You're doing something. But here's where you're going to make your point and make your pride. If you're the ref and you see a five count and you don't disqualify him, they're going to get on you for not disqualifying. If you make a three count and you stop the match, kudos to the ref because he stopped the match. Hey, one, two, three. I don't know what to tell you. And the ref leaves. Then he can fight. When you go back, right, who's the heat going to be on? Not the ref. It's going to be on the wrestler. Why didn't you kick out a three? Perfect example. Me and Tatanka, we were in um, – we were overseas at, on an overseas tour. It was me against Tatanka. We're going back and forth. Tatanka's got a five count going on me. And all of a sudden, the ref, um, what's his name, Charles, uh, counts five. Tatanka gets up. He says, what are you doing? What's going on? I counted five. I counted five. So all of a sudden, I'm standing there. And here, I said, here comes a super kick. Bang. Out he went out of the ring. And I'm freaking standing there like this. You know what I'm saying? So it worked out pretty good. But the referee took took charge. Yeah, I took said, okay, here we go, just to get out of it. But that's having a veteran presence. But you're covering up a mistake. And then when he got back to the ring, who got the heat? Tatanki Steph was getting the heat up. He said, what's you supposed to listen to the five count? You can't let the ref hang there. You're not supposed to touch the ref, can't push the ref, can't spit on the ref. But you have to obey the ref. That's his job, fellas. You know what I mean? So, I mean, this thing here was a big, complete mess. It was look awful. And I hope I got to put this out there. I got I got a news thing for you guys. And I'm okay. going to say that I'm going to say this right now. I'm watching all this and I want everybody. I'm telling the thirty nine to fifty thousand people who listen to this. And I want you to go on Twitter, on your social media, on everything you've got. And I want you to reap. Pete, what I said, the only way you're going to save wrestling, the only way you're going to do something, okay, is if you go old school. How do you do it? You have the 25th anniversary of Raw, and there's certain people who are not on there who contributed and should be there. But you really want to save wrestling people? Let's do it, okay? You fire the general manager of Raw. You fire the general manager of SmackDown. 
Who do you hire for Raw? Vince Russo. Who do you hire for SmackDown? Eric Bischoff. You let them go head to head, and then what happens? Russo uses the guys of his time. Eric Bischoff uses the guys from his time. You got on this side, you got the NWO. <laughs> on this side, you have the Attitude Era. I'm not saying yeah, to make right. them. Yeah. I'm not saying to make them full time wrestlers. But the camaraderie and the head to head and going to head to head on the on the pay per views yep. to see who gets the higher ratings. I bet you Vince McMahon has made a deal with the devil. If he brought back Vince Russo, everybody said, "Ah, Vince, what the hell?" Everybody would want to see what Russo's doing or how he comes out and what he has to say. Yep. If Eric Bischoff went there and he had the NWO music and the Wolf Pack coming out and you had Hulk Hogan make a return. You mean to tell me that SmackDown wouldn't beat Raw on a Monday night? Because all those casuals, months. all those casuals that left would trickle on back when they finally heard. Most of them, but yeah, I mean that's that's the thing. Everything has changed. The landscape has changed. Aaron, what's your thoughts like on on the Seth Rollins curb stomp? Are you glad it's back? Is WWE just confusing everybody with what they really want to be pro? You know, anti concussion or Right. I'm just, it's confusing. What's your thoughts well, on I that? I like the move personally. I think it's a cool looking move. It was, according to Rollins, banned because he was the world champion and WWE apparently did not want him as the representative of the company being the top guy doing that move. So that's why they had him stop doing that move while he was the WWE champion. The question is, you know, he hasn't been WWE champion for a while now. Why? Did he not have the move again until just now? That, I don't know. But apparently that was more of the reason than it was too dangerous or whatever. You know, it's a, it's a move I guess they don't want kids doing at home. You know, it's not a, a PG kid-friendly move, I guess. And, and Jaxie, I'm going to blame that. So if they really wanted to be creative, the curb stomp on Balor at the end of Raw and him literally on camera for 60 seconds or longer being woozy – and then he was acting like a goof with Sasha Banks in the Mixed Match Challenge. They should make that a work. Like, he got knocked so silly, he's sitting there doing the boss sh shuffle or whatever Sasha does. Like, what, what are your thoughts in 24 hours that Finn Balor got curb stomped, was woozy, and then's dancing with Sasha Banks the next night? Like, it, <laughs> what's your thoughts on that? Vito said it best. It's lack of continuity. It just really doesn't make sense. Um, the move itself, I like it sparingly. I don't want to see it turn into a Canadian destroyer type of thing where everybody in the whole world's doing it. Hmm. That's a good but point. It is exciting, but it's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, guys, and, guys yeah. what are they doing to the Ballot Club? Aren't they making them all a bunch of goofs? Pretty much. Yeah. Right. I mean, and these guys were a prestigious club. They were the man of men. They were the, they were um, what's the tag team? Uh, the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes. Do you think they're making them the fool to make them look the fool? Did anybody come with that concept yet? That no. they're taking the Ballot Club, the Bullet Club, making them these top Japan guys, these money merch guys selling shirts, and they're making them say nerd, making them smile, making them look like idiots. What do you think of AJ Styles' promo on SmackDown? Did we not just talk about this last week, that these promos are horrendous? And then I love AJ to death when, it, when he tries to do the best on the mic because everybody knows he's a, he's a wrestler. He's a wrestling factory, but he's not the top-notch promo guy. How did, why did they let him hang, hang out to dry? Aaron, what's your thoughts on that horrible promo? It was I hate terrible. saying that. It was really but bad. But it was. Well, you know, he is the WWE champion. He's the top babyface. So I Ugh. guess the idea is he's got to have the John Cena slash Roman Reigns comedy. You know, he has to have the layers. He has to be a sports entertainer. So he has to go out there and be funny. The problem is the, the material he's given is so terrible. And very few guys can actually take that material and make it work. I think The Rock was one of the few exceptions as far as guys that could take bad material and make it work. But whenever Cena tries it, it doesn't work. And especially when Reigns tries it, it doesn't work. Well, Russo's not writing it for him these days. That's why The Rock made it work so well. Because not that Russo I thought that was Brian lines, Gerwitz that wrote but, The Rock. But I'm just promos. saying, that whole era, you could let a wrestler pretty much freestyle. You give him bullet points and let him freestyle. Today, they tell AJ, go out and say exactly this. 
they tell Roman, go out and say exactly this. Jexy, am I right about that today? Don't they really basically make their top guys say, you know, not bullet points, but verbatim? Yeah, line for line. Yeah, and that's very unfortunate. It really, really truthfully is. If they would just let these guys go out and be more authentic and say what's on their mind, I'm sure they could weave something together. I'm sure they're created enough to come up with something. It just sounds so scripted where it's not even believable scripted. It's just this monotone, terrible. Yeah, Vito, like, any thought? Well, yeah, and Jexy, the say like, who gives the best promo in your opinion in WWE today? And I, I figure, who, don't say Pete Dunne. <laughs> but, but like, but I mean, so in all seriousness, like, who do you, who would you pick? Probably Enzo is one of the top. Because okay. he, he's himself. No stuttering. He, he knows what, yeah, it comes out. It just flows. It's not like he's thinking. And I agree. And you can give the Miz the same categorization with that. Yeah. So, Vito, any thoughts before I have another topic I'm really, I really want to get to. But right any here. thoughts on the promo topic? Promo topic. Here you we go, we talk guys. about every week. Okay. <laughs> when you had the Attitude Era and you had the, and you had the Nitro Wars, I was there for both of them. And you saw the promo. Now, do you think that these guys didn't come off the top of their heads? Especially the Kevin Nashes, the Rick Flairs, the Goldbergs, the Stings, the big Vitos. Because I can tell you right now, when they told me, Vito, um, we want to talk about this. I put it in my own words. They didn't give me a script. So a lot of the stuff that you see when I was with Mean Gene and doing my thing and talking about stuff... I did it. They gave me 30 seconds, a minute, hit this, hit this, and do this. And that, I was able to be myself. Right. Kevin Nash is one of the best, one of the best mic people of all time. The Razor Ramon, you talk about the great Scott Steiner, big Papa Pump at WCW. You think he learned lines or did he go out there and shoot the shit? <laughs> remember yeah. the math, remember the math promo he gave? Yeah, I mean, guys, <laughs> but then you you go to the WWE, you think Stone Cold Steve Austin was scripted? You think The Rock was all scripted? You think Triple H was all scripted? You think Vince McMahon goes out there and doesn't go off the top of his head or Stephanie or anybody else? The people are afraid to go against the grind, and if they don't try it, they don't know. And when they go back, why didn't you say this? Well, this is the way I felt it, and this is the way I thought it would come out better. And nobody has the has the... <laughs> grapefruits hmm. today because everybody's afraid yep. to go and say you know this is how i felt it should come out and i didn't feel right about doing it and once you go out there and do it people okay the people are gonna like you you get the people and you go hell yeah and you stick your fingers up and you maybe the people come to you and you do your thing and you twirl around and you go you know go to all this if you add that people and this of course for all wrestlers out there be your own person do your own thing be who you are. If you're Big Vito from Staten Island, New York, and you grew up in a mafia era, you go out and be a mafia guy and you talk that shtick. You know why? Because nobody could do it better than you and nobody knows better than you, okay? And if you're going to be an Irish guy and you come from Ireland, you're going to talk your Irish shtick and you're going to do your thing. If you're, um, you know, the virtual no DQ and you're going to sit there and he's going to do his thing, every week... We have a discussion. Am I coming off right? No, you're being yourself. You're learning on the job. You're doing a great job. Aaron's the head guy here. Aaron sits there. He's very mild-mannered, right? But when he caught, when he has to speak, he does. Jexy is new to the group. She's learning on the job, and she's, and she's getting better every week on how to handle herself. So that's what you're doing. We're all learning how to be ourselves. I have the experience to be myself because I've been doing this for 26 years, guys. So if you guys follow what I'm doing and say what's on your mind, say it in less than 30 seconds, you're going to be okay. And that goes for everybody out there in the wrestling world. Be yourself. Do your thing. Cut yep. it short. Make a point. Go ahead. Next jersey. And third and, and 30 seconds veto time, just so everybody knows, 30 seconds and veto time is five minutes, but that's cool because oh. you're the Pavarotti of hard shots, hard shots of the body. body. The pies on has got it going on. You know, the Enzo and the Miz, I mean, those guys are yep. probably the, the two that can re you really feel their emotion come through on their promo. Well, did so. you notice that Enzo has been like a little, like, held back a little bit and like you could tell like he has to follow lines and it's yeah. not like it used to be and like he has to yeah. follow some kind of script and that's why he's been like a lull on his promos he's been neutered yeah 
He's been muted. Yeah, and, and I think he's got a lot of pressure as a cruiserweight champ, too, because he knows he does st- – you know, they have to protect him because he's not a great worker. Um, is he learning? You know, hopefully. Is he going to get a little bit better? But he's never going to be the the, t- the prototypical 205 live guy. But you almost can feel like he is a little bit nervous being the champion because he knows he does have to go out there and have some matches, and he's going to have to try to work and make it look good and not botch and – and, you know, he, he's comfortable when he does everything else but wrestle. When the wrestling's in the mix or he's got some big bumps coming up or spots, I think that's when I noticed, the end, you know, Enzo kind of takes a step back and being a little timid. And that's just been, you know, from the last six weeks. No, you're absolutely right. And you know what else, guys? They just signed that kid Ricochet, right? You see him yeah. do flips, flips, flip, 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 flip. Now, if Enzo holds on to this title a little longer and they get this kid through the system in, in NXT, I don't know how fast. And you put a ricochet in there with Enzo. What? That is worlds apart. What yes. do you do? You make Enzo the kid's manager and you go off in the sunset yep. and you cover your bases. Yep. And I agree. I'm a proponent for that. I do want to see Enzo as a manager, and I think he'll have a long life in the wrestling business. All right, let's jump back to uh, – I know we talked about AJ Styles a little bit, but I want to jump back to Raw for one more topic um, before we get back to SmackDown. And that is Braun Strowman was fired by Kurt Angle, and in one hour's time he was rehired by Stephanie McMahon. And while this was all happening – He went on an Attitude Era-like rampage. Now, some of it was good because it was like, you know, he's hurting people. He's throwing people. But here's the thing. It's their storyline holes, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Where were the police? Like back in the Austin, you know, when Austin would do this, he'd be arrested. Why was Braun being funny during times when he should have been pissed the whole time because he was just fired? Aaron Rift, what are your thoughts? I love (laughs) this segment, but there were holes in it. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with you 100%. I thought it was okay. very entertaining, but at the same time, I'm watching it. I'm like, okay, this makes no sense whatsoever. Why did it take 45 minutes for Kurt Angle to call the police and then call off the police? Wouldn't Stephanie just immediately call him and say, hey, you know what? He's too much of an asset. And why would Kurt Angle just fire the guy? Why not send him over to SmackDown? The whole thing was just a bit silly and over the top, but I still enjoyed it. It was a throwback to the Attitude Era, and I would like to see more storylines like this that last throughout the show where you have one segment and then later in the show there's another segment and then another segment and it keeps progressing. I like it, and actually the ratings did a lot better than usual. I know football season's over, but they did something like $3.5 million for the first hour, which is much higher than what they've been doing lately the <coughs> football competition. Wow. It's a pretty big bounce back. So I think they should definitely consider doing more of this, this kind of stuff. I will say this. I thought Raw was a much more entertaining show than SmackDown. I was bored to tears with SmackDown. I'm not we'll sure all how agree. you guys think. <laughs> We'll all agree with that. Jexy, so when I thought of this Strowman thing and it was playing out, I was shocked. Like, it only took place over the course of an hour. Yes, Raw is three hours. But, like, why can't they thread something the whole way? Could you imagine, Braun, say you got arrested like Austin did. Then say somehow he got bailed out, or I know the process in real time doesn't go that fast, but say somehow he got out and the police were chasing him and he makes it back to Raw and the SWAT team has to come in and throw a net on him, tase him, and then he still busts out of all of it. Now, maybe that's too over the top, but why do they just get it done so quick? And I, I just felt they bought it was such a great concept, and I felt they ended up botching it with the Stephanie phone call to Kurt. Thoughts? You know, I see where you're coming from. I enjoyed it myself as far as what it was with them actually breaking up some of the show into the multiple segments. Yeah. Um, they said they were calling in the SWAT team. And not no, uh, well, I, I don't know if that's what I, they said, but that's what I would have done. <laughs> it's Braun yeah, Strowman, think, you know? I think that's what he had said because at the same time, you know, really, if they're not tasing him, what, how are they are they're really going to take down Braun? You know, and with as much, I think, kind of media that we've had on police brutality, nobody really wants to get into the mix of crossing that line, maybe. Um, But that's what used to make TV so good. If if something in the world was happening, you did it. Archie Bunker. You know, Vito knows what I'm talking about. Not afraid of. Roseanne. Not afraid of offending somebody. You just do it. Yeah. But you have to be anymore. You have to be so afraid of offending people right. because 
they get outraged over everything. People just want to be offended and they find issues with things. You know, should you be like the, uh, Scott, I think it was Scotty, the movie dude on Twitter who uh, posted the tweet of that lady who said, this is how you're treating, or um, I'm sorry, raising your kids to believe that if you just throw a temper tantrum, you're going to get what you want. One, who raises their kids off of wrestling. We know better. You're, you're not learning morals and values from professional wrestling. Um, but, like, I don't know. It was over the top. I'm sure us all as adults know that uh, he's not flipping a 16,000-pound semi-cab. Little kids probably believed it. They probably loved it. I loved watching him rage. I loved watching him yeah. throw it. No, everything hey. is perfect. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's yeah, what Braun does. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, what yeah. Braun does. He's a monster, and and seeing him destroy people, destroy trucks, that that's that's entertaining. And WWE is fiction. It's make believe. You know, I I want to see them push the envelope more because it is fiction. You know, in fiction there shouldn't yeah. be limitations. You know, look at Eminem and the controversy he's done over the years. I mean, yeah, it's edgy and it's just storytelling. And some people just don't get that that it's fiction. It's fantasy. You don't do this stuff in real life, but I feel like yep. people make such a big deal out of it and complain that WWE and society in general, they feel like they're on eggshells and they cannot say anything even remotely offensive. So that, that's what's really unfortunate about not just WWE, but the entire world right now in 2018. Yep. Vito, what's your thoughts on this whole Strowman angle from Raw and the fact that a guy could – some somebody argued with me on Twitter – a guy could lift the semi truck on its side, but then when he goes to face Brock Lesnar, he can't just manhandle Brock Lesnar. And I told this guy, I'm like, well, first of all, don't try to overthink this. A semi truck is heavy, and no man is supposed to be able to do that. But it's stationary. Mark Henry, world's strongest man, pulled semi trucks. Brock fights back. That's why you just don't throw him around the ring. What are your thoughts on the logic of Strowman's okay. strength? <laughs> now, I'm going to give you the logic on this whole angle. I thought it was yeah. good. That he went on a rampage. I thought it sucked that Kurt Angle, which is a total horrible actor. <laughs> and Kurt Angle is my boy, you know, but he, he's a horrible actor. And when you say, okay, Bron, okay, we're going to give you your job back. Now, if you work at McDonald's, people, and they say you're going to give you a promotion to lettuce, and they still got you cutting onions, and you say, the hell with this shit. I'm going to go off. And you start throwing people around. You flip the burgers out of the thing. You're throwing the buns on the floor. You go over there and <laughs> smack somebody's mom a couple times. Right? Okay, okay, calm down. We're going to move you up to lettuce. That's the same thing that happened with Braun Strowman. There's no repercussion for him doing the destruction. So that means in a workplace, you are allowed to cause a fit and go on a tantrum and then you are going to be rewarded. Okay, you got your championship match back. You got your promotion and a raise. And we're going to give you an extra 25 cents just to shut up and stop. So that was unrealistic. What should have happened was Vince McMahon should have came out from the back and said, if you don't stop this crap, you're fired. Braun Strowman should have took him, chokeslammed him through a table. And then would say, okay, now who's fired? Now that would have been TV. Yep, to end Raw, where everybody literally thinks everybody that they just took him out of the... That hey, would have been the talk of the town. They still got Raw 25. Maybe that'll be the cliffhanger on the go-home show. Now, you have the, the thing with the truck. You were fighting with a guy on Twitter. If I'm able to push a truck, a 38,000-ton truck, and push it over, what man is going to be able to throw a punch at my body and hurt me. I am I am U.S. steel. You ain't putting a dent in this armor if but, I'm lifting this. You know what's from, funny? What? Erroneous. Erroneous. Yeah. You know what's funny? Right. You know, let me finish. You're cutting right, me off. All right, all right, go ahead. You're cutting me off, okay? If you got that kind of power, that's like watching a superhero video, right? And then you guys are into the cartoon of superhero where the guy punches somebody and he goes 50 miles, he hits a brick wall, he gets up, he comes shooting back, and he goes and hits somebody else, right? Now, here's Braun Strowman. He's lifting the truck. He's throwing guys around. Yeah, I understand Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. I understand Kane is Kane. But when you're doing this kind of stuff, you're taking down the Titantron. You're lifting a truck. 
That there should be you are indestructible. There should be nobody beating you. But we all know he's not winning this title. We know he's going to lose. The only way to save Braun Strowman, Kane takes the takes the pin. Braun is on the outside, gets ferocious, nails Brock from the from behind. Freaking picks him up, gives him his finish, throws the belt on him. You just saved Braun Strowman, and now you have another program going to WrestleMania where it should be a three man dance. Brock, Reigns, and Braun Strowman. Well, I, I love I say, it. I, I mean, love that I, match. I've said this before, you know, in September. I think Braun Strowman should have the rocket strapped to him. He should be the man. He's the guy to be the face of the company, in my opinion, and he should be the champion. So I agree. He should win the title at the Royal Rumble. Do I think it's going to happen? I, I don't think so, but maybe, maybe something strange will happen and he'll win the title. Now, the other thing I wanted to say that I thought was funny was, you know, Strowman uh, tipped over that truck and then later he struggled to pick up Michael Cole. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but he was having trouble picking him up. I'm like, okay, he just that tipped way. over a truck, and he can't pick up Michael Cole? Are you kidding me? So, yeah, there were some issues with the segment, but I was still entertained with it overall. So, Virtue, anything else you want to add on it? No, uh, you know, if you don't convince me, I was going to throw erroneous at him saying, who's to say that Brock can't tip over a semi, but... Uh... I, I, you know, and Kane, well, Kane, you know, because well, Kane he's the just evil, sets people on fire evil. and electrocutes yeah. people's testicles. But yeah, I mean, I get it. If you're only showing the Braun do that and nobody else, then you make everyone think that he's got, you know, superhuman. So yeah, I agree. Okay, you so now me, the you know. new the new word when you're wrong, it, it's okay, young stallion. You know, just back up your horses. Just you know, you're just getting good at debate where he actually <laughs> convinced me right here in front of everybody. Okay, that's you're, that getting, you're getting you're getting. I'm the, I'm the no TQ friggin' show champion. I'm going for three months in a row. Ain't nobody right. jacking my shit right now. I'm, I'm going strong. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody knows Gilberto's by now. Gilberto's not even you... trying. Gilberto's not even trying anymore. He just gave up. Yeah. yeah. Rules, baby. Keep Everyone rules. thought it was an inside job, and then they see Vito earning it. I mean, that's what, how it is. All right, back to SmackDown. SmackDown was, let's just say, you know, like a Dave Meltzer heavy show, all wrestling matches, long wrestling <laughs> matches. Maybe not five-star matches, but it, basically it turned into the finish of the United States title tournament. Right. And it was on and out. You know, it was weird. We knew we were going to get a couple of the matches, but we didn't know we were going to get the final. So it felt very lackluster. I do want to say I am glad Rude won it. I told everybody on this panel not too long ago, Rude would get it sooner than later. I know, Aaron, you were going to argue he should have chased it still. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad Rude got it, but the thing is, it won't mean anything unless he can show that he's glorious. So Aaron, yes, thoughts sir. on the way SmackDown happened? I know you talked about it on your live video. Yep. Um, I'll agree that it was a lackluster show, but I am happy that they put it on Rude. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for Rude that he's the champion. I think he should be champion, but you know, I feel like at the same time, Mahal really needed a win badly here, something to rebound from losing the WWE title. I feel like... So wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. People are thinking the same thing I am right now. Sympathy for Mahal now after this whole year. Aaron, please explain, my man. Well, the thing is, you know, I don't want to see Mahal just go back into the lower card after being WWE champion. You know, if it's going to be a slow descent, let it be a slow descent. Or just let him have the US title and rebuild him and, you know, over six months to a year, make him a credible contender again. He will either sink or swim. I feel like by having him lose here... You're just quickly having him go on the downfall, and he's just going to be back in 3MB in, the, in a couple of months, maybe on the Andre the Giant Battle Royal again. Maybe he'll be the runner-up a second time in a row. Who knows? But, yeah, I thought the show was terrible. I was really bored with it. Jaxi, thoughts on Rude winning the title? And is Jinder officially now in oblivion, which, you know, we've kind of said that after he lost to AJ Styles. Or is it just maybe masking a surprise Jinder Mahal Royal Rumble win that would you know be like what what's your what's your thoughts? I think that would be great if they did that. As far as the surprise Rumble win, um, I feel like this was another one of those they just couldn't resist the urge and the temptation to give it to us all at once. They should not have done both matches in one night. Again, let it build, let yeah. it go. Yeah. You know, um, I'm happy for Rude. I think that he deserves it as far as uh, winning the championship, especially with what happened in the three-way uh, last month, that it is good for him. Gender, it really sucks for. You know, he had a pretty decent run as champion. We saw him obviously now start to go into the decline. Are they going to use him as enhancement 
for other talent. And if they're looking at going that route, at the same time, it's really not that believable because he's been destroyed so much as a believable champion. Yes. If they would have just kept him as a strong, solid champion, they could build off of that and say, oh, yeah, Bobby Roode now beat the champion. Now Bobby Roode is even stronger. But they didn't do that because they've already weakened gender. So now he's beaten a weakened, a weakened opponent. Yeah, and I don't like it because he was the former WWE champion. You know, I don't think he should be going on that decline so quickly when he was just the yeah. WWE champion. What does it say about the WWE championship <laughs> when the former champion's going to be back in preliminary matches again? I mean, Vito, your thoughts on it? I got to tell you guys, I did not like it. I thought, you know, everybody says when you make it to the top, there's only one way to go down. Yeah. But they don't have that many people who are top heels. And he learned on the job on how to be a credible heel. And I've been saying this all along. He finally learned how to fight like a champion and fight like his body looks to be an ass kicker without the two guys, the, the Siege brothers, with him. And that's what he looks like now. He's a finished product. But they're burying him and they're pulling him down. Should he have won that match? Absolutely. What's to say you can't make him make Bobby Roode earn it at the Royal Rumble, a more prestigious, more bigger, more better place? And when he won the title, what was he, people? He was flat. Nobody bought it. It wasn't anything. Nobody got up on their feet. There was no standing ovation. There was no streamers. There was no balloons. There was no nothing. It was flat. He's not a credible champion because you all know that when Dolph Ziggler comes back, Dolph Ziggler's going to beat him. And he's going to take it from him. And then once Ziggler goes, and then once Mahal goes, who do you have to fight with? Are you going to stick Baron Corbin back in there? No. There's not. They are a limited roster. They don't have that many people to, fl to float around. And all these guys have already interchanged with each other. So what are you going to do to change things up? Bobby Roode winning it was a flat win. It did nothing for his credibility. Jinder Mahal winning, being a two-week champion, a transitional champion till the Royal Rumble would have made more sense. Because now you're beating a... a um, he did beat a, a WWE champion, but if he would have beat a U.S. champion, is that the, uh, this title we're talking about, the U.S. championship? Yes. Yep. Right? The U.S. title, now he's a... WWE champion, a holder of the U.S. champion, that's a two two title winner. So now he has more credibility. He beat a double champion. So now what do you do with Bobby Roode? Okay, beat you in the Mahal flat. Where do you put him now? And you notice AJ Styles is fl is floundering. Bobby Roode didn't get the pop. Two former TNA guys, and they're friggin' they're not as over as everybody thinks. Remember, and you can throw Nakamura in there too, right? And Nakamura is is what is Nakamura, guys? Nakamura, Shit. everybody was on his jock, and he was going to be great. He is nothing but a mid carder. He doesn't have the it factor. So what you have now is two former TNA guys, and Nakamura really wasn't a, a main eventer for TNA like AJ Styles and Bobby Roode. But now you have the two guys who said, "Oh, they could stack up against Cena. They could go against uh, Orton. They can't." It's not they don't have the credibility. They don't have that possess. They don't have that it factor. And you see with AJ Styles, he's dying. And now you're going to see with Bobby Roode, he comes out, okay, glorious. And then what do you do after that? You got nothing. Yeah. His matches don't really light the world on fire. I mean, his entrance is really what's getting the crowd reactions. But even, even this week, you know, to be <laughs> fair, though, it's Laredo, Texas, and it wasn't exactly a very hot crowd to begin with. I don't know. It was like half empty, I heard. Oh, it was bad. It was like three to 4,000 people. It was, uh, it was not wow. a very strong house for this week. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, Rude's the champ. Now we got to see going forward how is Ziggler going to come back. Is he going to just be in the Rumble? That's the thing, uh, too. You know, you know, sorry to interrupt you. You know, going no, back to what Vito said. The thing is, if he'd won it at the Royal Rumble, it would have been in front of 20,000 people in Philadelphia. I guarantee you, Rude would have gotten a much better reaction than in front of 4,000 people in Laredo, Texas. So th there's yeah. that, too. Well, they're clearly worried about time or something with the two full Royal, Royal Rumble matches. So they're cutting matches out already. So why do you probably... do a two out of three falls I, match? I, I know. It's, it's crazy. But... You know, SmackDown's a very interesting beast going forward because they don't, I mean, they have all the indie-type wrestlers and, you know, with the indie fans that are drawn to, but they don't have that sports entertainer draw type like a Strowman 
or the Roman Reigns or, you know, guys like that. I mean, Cena back and forth between shows. So it's going to be really interesting what happens on SmackDown going forward. With that said, it's main event time. And, Jexy, it's now your turn for Jexy's Rage. And you can talk about anything you want to rage about. If and I just go ahead, rage on, Jexy. Yeah, you know what really grinds my gears? What tag, Vito? tag ropes and tag teams that don't use them. No, I'm just oh. kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, what I actually really want to talk about is uh, a couple of things that we've already touched on tonight. And with the signing of Ricochet and Candice LeRae, why are we continuously signing new people? when we're not using the people that we have. Now, I get for the worker, for the performer, it's excellent. They're living their dream. They're getting that chance. Okay, that's great. We already lack character development. We already lack continuity and storyline. And you're bringing in these guys and girls who are established in promotions. They're established on the indie scenes that have characters. So when you bring them in, so many of these guys are losing themselves. They're being given different characters. They're losing their names. They're not being allowed to be themselves. Now, is it understood that when you come into the Fed that you're going to go into that mold? Yes. But at what point does it stop? It's gonna be way more entertaining to see these guys go out there doing themselves talking for themselves give them more autonomy let them ad lib more stop doing every we understand it's pg that's a moot point there's no point in even hashing that out anymore we get it but these guys obviously got there on their own credit and on their own merit when they were scouted there was something that they saw in them to begin with let them bring what they have to the proverbial table let them do their dance and let them be themselves. But again, <laughs> why? Why? It's great to have people on deck. Like yeah. Vito just said, some talent is stagnant. Some people have nowhere else to go. That's great. But why are we not using the people that we have? We have talent that could do so many different things, but they're just getting pushed to the wayside. They're not even being used. And you know, you hear the saying of throw shit to the wall until it sticks. It seems like they're doing that a lot and they're not even giving stuff a chance to stick. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like you know, I feel like <laughs> um yeah, I feel like Vince has his toys that he likes to play with and when he gets tired of them, he passes them aside and then brings in the new toys and I feel like a lot of guys don't really get the opportunities and WWE gives up on people so quickly and that's why we see new people cycling in and out all the time and guys like wade barrett quitting neville quitting you know these guys get frustrated that that they have the ability and the talent but they don't really get the opportunities um virtue go ahead you know jexy my spin on all of this is the reason why i think they just want to pluck the indies of all their top stars is because somebody triple h has somebody uh you know vince mcmahon doesn't know these people you know so so triple h especially when they come up through nxt He's seeing these indie fans, what basically is the wrestling community fan base of the WWE today, for the majority, because the casuals have left. There's still a few, but it's mostly indie, you know, we, we know who we're talking about. Well, if you bring in a Ricochet, he's got a fan base. Well, they're going to watch WWE no matter how we book Ricochet. If you bring in Candice LeRae, she's got her fan base. The Joey Ryan fans are Candice LeRae fans, so they're going to start watching WWE and talking about it. Johnny Gargano's wife. I just think they're trying to pluck these indie fans that maybe aren't committed to WWE Network yet, thinking if we just keep bringing all the indie, the top indie talent in, we're going to get our little niche a little bit bigger. Vito, what do you think on that? Well, guys, I'm going <laughs> to tell you why was the um, developmental started, because Vince McMahon does not like to use other people's talent. That's why he started the developmental te- the developmental uh, camps back in 2005 with John Laurinaitis. That was the plan, to develop their own talent. Right. When you have guys from WCW and they, Vince didn't like using WCW guys because they weren't WWE bred. Right. They already had a reputation. Okay. 
When you go on the indies, okay, now I'm going to talk TNA. Where did Bobby Roode go? NXT. Where did Austin Aries go? NXT. Where did um, James Storm go for a trial? NXT. Where did Samoa Joe go? NXT. Nakamura. Where did Nakamura, NXT. Where did all the top indie guys go who were not WWE bred? NXT. They went down there. They stayed there for a year. To learn the WWE brand. They learned how to do things. So they went there. And then they were brought up eventually. If they were that top of a star. They would have been went signed and went to the main roster. They wouldn't have went there. So now this Ricochet kid. And all the other guys who were signed. This uh, young girl who was there before. Serena Deb. And a, a couple other people. Who are these, this Johnny Gargano and everybody? They're all stuck in NXT. But are they going to break the? Are they going to break through and make it to the main roster? What they should do is take the Baileys, the um, Becky Lynches. Um, I don't want to say anybody else. Never. Mind. Those two stick out. Yeah. Who have run their course on the on the brands? Why not circulate them back into NXT and have them work with the other people? Yeah. And this way you could rebrand, re remake them. <laughs> they used Cesaro that way for some matches in the yeah, past. Yeah, they did with Sami Zayn. Right. So yeah. now what you're doing is you're rotating the talent so nothing gets old. And then nobody's just sitting at home. So if you're rotating the talent, you send them back to NXT, have them come back up again. So now you have a revolving door. Once they get to the top level, they don't think they deserve to go to NXT. But that's where you came from. You need to go back down and repackage yourself. Right, and all these new people are coming in. They got to develop and learn the WWE thing. Like I said, it's a cult following, like the indies, because NXT is an indie, has a cult following. But once they get up to the main roster, small Raw or SmackDown, they have to reinvent themselves again to what Raw or SmackDown wants. So it's a learning process, twofold. That they have to learn the process, learn what they want. You don't have 25 minutes on the indies. Now you got three minutes on TV. Get over. Yep. Now, what do you? Why do you think AJ got a pass to the main roster right away? Because he was a bigger star and a better wrestler, all around wrestler, than a lot of guys, and he had a bigger name because he made his name in Japan. He was a champion. He was a champion in uh, TNA. He was a champion all around. He's been in the business for so long that they had to give him a chance instead of making him go down to and it, it would have been ridiculous to keep him in NXT. Yeah. So they brought him in. Samoa Joe was a world champion. They put him in NXT for a year because that's what he needed. And even when he comes up, did he get in shape? No. Did he get uh, any? Uh, did he do anything different? No. Then who's the guy? I'll give you a guy who's supposed to be very good, and he's still in NXT and hasn't cracked the level yet because he doesn't want to put the time in. Okay, he's Cesaro's ex-partner. What's his name? Oh no. Oh uh, yeah, Cassius Chris Sonner? Hero. Chris Hero. Chris Hero. Yeah. He was the big talk and the big. He was the big fish in a pond. We got to sign Chris Hero because he was with Cesaro and did the tag team, right? They go up there. They split them up because they don't want to use them as a tag team because they don't want to use other people's talent. So Chris Hero goes to NXT. Yeah, eh, I'm not a big enough star here. I got a bad attitude. I'm going to go back out. He's floundering on the indies. It wasn't that big. He got way out of shape. Gonna, he comes back to the WWE. What is he doing in NXT? This guy was a shoe-in stud. And what is he doing? He's, he's like their Ty Dillinger now. He is, he's, a, he's stuck in NXT and he can't get out of there. Yeah. Because either he's not putting in the time. He's bored with what he's doing. Wasn't there another wrestler named Sammy Callahan, big <laughs> star on the indies, right? He's going to do all these great things. He's going to do this. He went there, and what happened? He wasn't a big enough fish in the big pond, and he took his bag, and he went home. They, all you have to do is wait it out. You're not making great bucks on the indies, guys. And I don't care what anybody says. Oh, I'm making this. I'm making that. I'm making – guys – there's nothing like getting a steady paycheck every week instead of having to make your own bookings. Cancellations come, you're not making money. This happens, you're not making money. Shirt sales, you're not making money. Go to the WWE, you get a steady paycheck. You're training every day. That's what you want to do. You want to train. You want to learn your craft. You want to work at it. Make your way up the ranks. 
That's what well, Vince McMahon ac- According to Cody Rhodes, he made seven figures last year. So is that yeah. believable? Hey, you guys at No DQ <clears throat> are making eight figures. Okay, good. We made a point. <laughs> and the Young Bucks, man, they sell more more merch than WWE superstars. Yeah, so but, a- no. is it? But it works. Clearly, it works. Or are they just? Are they working us? Are they lying about their numbers? But if you watched his match, if you <clears throat> watched the matches. What that he has is that what you're going to see on WWE because you're already seen Cody Rhodes in five or six different gimmicks and he could not get over. That's why he got frustrated because he could not get it's not the writer's fault, it's not Vince's fault, it's not Triple H, it's your fault that you're not working there and it's your fault you didn't get over. It's not anybody else. Okay, Vito's a tough mafia guy from Staten Island, give me a dress. I got it over because I know how to work. I went undefeated. I had the best gimmick in town. I did a lot of great things with it. Why? Did I complain? No. I made it work. Because if you know how to work and know how to do things, and I learned on the fly. Second of all, I learned how to be a baby face on the fly. Why? Because of all the things that I used to get frustrated as a great heel, and I knew that a baby face needed to do to get the heel over, I did for my heel. Makes sense, guys. Well, you know, I mean, and, and that's the thing. In 2018, we are going to see, is it going to be, you know, NXT starting to get bigger athletes again? Is it going to be the year of Braun Strowman and the Roman Reigns? Is, or is it going to be the AJ Styles and the Nakamura? Somebody is going to look pretty good by the end of 2018. And we're going to, it's either going to be Vince McMahon's WWE, like it always has been, which probably will, or, you know, the indie fans will get what they want. So, you know, we've went... Well over an hour today. Oh, yeah. Great discussion, everybody. Absolutely great discussion. And we got to leave the people wanting more. So it's time for plugs. So, Jexy, that was an awesome rage, by Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. Kudos. Kudos. Very good. I blame you for this hour and a half video. But, no, that's good. Good work. Good work. Um, what would you like to put put out there? Uh, 2018, 2020, Pete Dunn for president. Uh-oh. I'll be his VP. <laughs> Vito can be the press secretary. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. You know, Jex, Jex is my personal troll on, you know, on the whole scam, you know what I mean, on Twitter and everything. She got it I like know, that. that's right. That's right. That's the truth. But you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jexy Rocks, nodq.com, pick up a shirt, prowrestlingtees.com. Do it up. Absolutely. Cool. Big, big veto. Let's hear it. All right, guys. Now, we know we covered a lot of good stuff. We had a great show today. Just probably one of our more uh, analytic shows that we've had. Remember, 2018, we want to see Russo on Raw, Bishop on SmackDown going head-to-head by the end of the year. That will put asses in the seats. All right, here we go. We got Get In Color with Podcast One. Everybody go down and check it out with the Russo brand. If you guys check out No DQ, I'm here with these great people. And then we have the No DQ forums on Facebook. Go over there. Enjoy the chat. It's a real good time. Guys, these guys know what they're doing. It's a good upstarts group. Everybody's having a great time. We all enjoy it, okay? I got the Super Ugly Show that I'm doing on Tuesday nights. Another good group of young guys getting their stuff together, trying to make their way, and everybody's doing well. I have Big Vito Brent on uh, YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Great thing happened uh, this past week. We hit 10,000 10, views. We got 300 nice. subscribers. If everybody would go over there, subscribe, take a look at the videos. It's all good. Go to my Twitter at Big Vito at, uh, at uh, Big Vito Brand. Guys, we can always use more followers. I'm trying to get to 2,000 followers. I know I don't push it like I need. I'm begging or anything. And I'm buying no votes. But guys, just go over and hit the follow button. It's a good time on there because I'm promoting all of my teammates here. So it's always cool. Go to the Big Vito Brand on Facebook. And if you want to go and catch some merch, it's ProWrestlingTees.com slash the Big Vito brand. It's collar and elbow. Use the code Big Vito. And if you want to go to my website and hit all my stuff, it's BigVito.com, guys. We have things for sale there. Valentine's Day is coming up. And like I said, we don't take no donations at the Big Vito brand. I know people want to donate money and they want to help out. But if you go to my Amazon list, there's some nice gifts there. If you guys want to purchase something, a T-shirt or anything to show appreciation, it's always appreciated. And last but not least, champ, who runs the camp? Go ahead. Mr. Rift. 
All right. Well, yeah, definitely check out BigVito.com. Buy his merch, you know, buy the NoDQ.com merch. That's the best way you guys can support the website, support Big Vito. Spread the love. Tell a friend. If you have a wrestling friend who watches WWE, have them check out this video. They might learn something new. You never know. So check out NoDQ.com. Check out BigVito.com. Follow Virtue at NoDQ underscore Virtue. Follow at Jexy Rocks on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Big Vito at Big Vito Brand and BigVito.com. And follow me at Aaron Riff. Virtue, anything else? Nope, that is it. Um, you'll see I'm wearing a Jackson Argo shirt. He is an indie wrestler trained at the Lance Storm Wrestling Academy. He is my only two-time indie wrestler of the month. I thought that was and a I Jason believe- X shirt. No. <laughs> and believe it or not, there's this indie promotion in Pennsylvania called IWC. Believe it or not, he's a two-time rookie of the year. Think about the creative in that. Two-time rookie of the year. So anyway, yeah, follow Jackson Argos at Jackson Argos on Twitter. Hey, um, and of do, course, do you have? Yeah. Uh, do you have? I mean, I know I'm, you know, troll of a month at, you know, no DQ and stuff, but uh, you guys didn't mention, you know, if I made rookie of the year or anything. I just wanted to know. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, or you are you are officially yeah. the no DQ forms dot com rookie of the year, and well on we your way to be. To be in the number one, yes, we're going to have to issue a press release, number one yes. forms <laughs> member. But, Jexy, you got to get on there. You, we have, I, I'm sorry to peer pressure you, but you got to get on there on the forms and start trolling with Vito and company. Yep, it's a good time. I, I can't compete with Vito. All I can do is be like a great moderator and promote him. That's the route I've taken. So. I know you laugh every time I post. Oh, it's awesome. It's hear, awesome. I can hear you guys laughing when you post. And you know what? That That's it. I'm going to call the show because we got to get on there and we got to put some more stuff Wait, on. Wait, what's the hashtag? Hashtag. Clean your rooms, guys. Just clean your rooms. 